This is Mac OS Ken. Good news, bad news for ticker symbol AAPL. Coda's win gives Apple streaming service a bump and a nature series for Apple TV Plus 66 million years in the making. It is Monday, the 4th of April, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Trade Coffee. Get $30 off your first order plus free shipping at drinktrade.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Kanji, device management for your Apple environment. The last place that I worked that wasn't just me working for me had more computers than I can count. When they needed updates, a small number of people had to physically deal with a large number of machines at times that proved inconvenient for everybody. If that sounds anything like your workplace, make it stop with Kanji. With Kanji, the Apple gear you manage is way manageable. That's all the apps and settings you want in place for your team. Plus, devices managed with Kanji keep themselves secure. Apps are patched, operating systems are updated, and security controls are enforced without active management from admins. You set the time frame for installation after update, and Kanji handles the rest without you having to handle anything. Macs, iThings, even Apple TVs... Whatever Apple hardware your business uses, Kanji can simplify managing those devices. Go to kanji.io slash macOSCan for a free demo and trial. That's K-A-N-D-J-I, kanji.io slash macOSCan. Find out why companies like Lacework, Segment, all birds and others use Kanji for zero touch Apple device management. K A N D J I, again, that is kanji.io slash macOS can. Your free demo and trial are waiting at kanji.io slash macOS can. All right, which do you want first, the good news or the bad news around Apple shares and Wall Street? Well, let's do the good news first. It comes from Morgan Stanley analyst Eric Woodring. Apple 3.0 had a look at a note he wrote wherein he argues that Apple's recent change regarding reader apps won't mean that big a hit for the Cupertino company. We heard last week that Apple would start allowing apps that are mostly designed to access books, music, video, and other digital content to link to outside websites for account creation and management. In other words, the Netflix app, for example, could have a link to Netflix.com to let iPhone users sign up, cutting Apple out of its 30% or 15% commission. No big deal, says Woodring. Quoting his note, the top 10 App Store reader apps make up less than 8% of total App Store revenue, while the top 20 account for 10% and the top 50 account for 13% of App Store revenue. This suggests that in a worst-case scenario where all reader app consumers circumvent App Store payments altogether, which we see as highly unlikely, the impact would be limited to 1-2% to of earnings per share. And he's got numbers to back up his doubt in the worst-case scenario. In a survey run by his firm late last year, only 18% of U.S. consumers and 38% of Chinese consumers listed themselves as extremely likely to go outside the App Store to pay for subscriptions. As for the dating game going on between Apple and regulators in the Netherlands, between the lack of conclusion in that case and Apple's plan to charge a 27% commission on sales made outside the App Store instead of the usual 30%? Sounds like sound and fury to the analyst. Quoting Woodring's note from late last week, We don't believe investors should look at this week's App Store headlines as representing a seismic shift in strategy for Apple, nor do we expect them to have a material impact 
on App Store take rates. So says Morgan Stanley analyst Eric Woodring, or maybe it was J.P. Morgan analyst Samik Chatterjee. Apple Insider ran a piece with those exact same numbers and even a couple of duplicate quotes giving Chatterjee the credit. But Apple 3.0 did a cut and paste of Woodring's note, so I think Apple Insider did something that I have nearly done a million times, confused Morgan Stanley with J.P. Morgan, and wrote up the wrong thing. Where it gets confusing, though, while Woodring is a Morgan Stanley analyst... He's not the one who usually covers Apple for the firm. Normally, that is Katie Huberty. She's given Apple shares a buy rating for Morgan Stanley and a price target of 210 bucks. Now, the bad news for Apple definitely comes from J.P. Morgan analyst Samik Chatterjee. Really? Barron says the Chatterbox has removed ticker symbol AAPL from his firm's focus list... It's not about Apple, though. It's about what Barron's calls moderation in consumer spending. Higher prices for food and fuel might crimp spending on iPhones and AirPods, it seems. That thinking is in line with comments last week from TSMC Chairman Mark Liu, though his concern was centered on geopolitical uncertainties and new COVID-related lockdowns in China. 20th century had the roaring 20s, the 21st gets the screaming 20s, when there is always something to freak you the freak out. Quoting Barron's, Chatterjee said the moderation in consumer spending will do two things. It will temper expectations for upside from the recent iPhone SE launch and limit the benefit in the services segment as gaming engagement in China moderates materially both from the pullback in consumer spending and tough comparisons to previous quarters. These reasons led him to remove the stock from the firm's analyst focus list, a designation reserved for what the firm deems attractive purchases. Not that Apple's not still attractive to the analyst. Despite consumer spending concerns, Chatterjee maintains a buy rating on Apple's shares. His 12-month price target on the shares is 210 bucks. Pour one out for a few more brushed aluminum homies. Mac Rumors says three of Apple's smallest and oldest MacBook models are about to go obsolete. Vintage and Apple parlance means off the market for more than five years but less than seven. Those machines are eligible for service and repair, provided anybody has the parts left to make the repair happen. Obsolete, on the other hand, means off the market for at least seven years and ineligible for service or repair from Apple or Apple-authorized service providers. Taking the long walk on the 30th of April, the 11-inch early 2014 MacBook Air, the 13-inch early 2014 MacBook Air, and the mid-2014 13-inch MacBook Pro. From the people who brought you staying active during pregnancy, Engadget has word of a new series of workouts on Apple Fitness Plus. The new series, cleverly called Get Back to Fitness After Having a Baby, is all about getting you back to fitness after you've had a baby. You know, if you're ready for that. Engadget says Fitness Plus trainer Bettina Gozo makes it clear that new parents should not feel any pressure to get back to fitness on any schedule other than what they are comfortable with, and that they should definitely get the okay from their health care provider before getting seriously active. That said, Gozo's been there. She was pregnant when she led, staying active during pregnancy. She has since had her baby, which makes her make sense for Get Back to Fitness after having a baby. You know, I was going to say they should do a series of workouts for middle-aged, doughy people like me. Then I realized they have that. It's called Fitness Plus. More news in a moment, but first I am stoked to introduce you to a new sponsor on this show. It is Trade Coffee. Anybody who's seen me at a conference or trade show knows that I have a cup of coffee with me pretty much all the time. 
but my love of coffee goes deeper than that. At home, I keep three different kinds of coffee. A light, a medium, and a dark. While I do have favorites, I do love trying new roasts, which makes trade coffee awesome. It's not a grab bag. You answer coffee questions when you get started. Light or dark? What do you use to make your coffee? Do you grind it yourself or buy it ground? You know, coffee questions. Then they start sending you coffee from craft roasters across the country. Small businesses that pay farmers fair prices to sustainably source great coffee beans from around the world. If you're one of those people when it comes to coffee, I think you'll love it. They think you'll love it. But if you're not happy with your first bag, they'll listen to what you didn't like, then put you to work with one of their coffee experts to get you a better bag for free. I'll tell you about some of the coffees I've had throughout this week. For now, I will just say every bag I've had has been great. See what you think. Right now, Trade Coffee is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order, plus free shipping when you go to drinktrade.com slash macOSCan. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash macOSCan and let Trade find you a coffee you'll love. That's drinktrade.com slash macOSCan for $30 off. You know what people are watching since Coda won the Academy Award for Best Picture? Well, that probably spoiled it. Anyway, it's Coda. Two sources say so. First, our friends at Real Good have reached out to me to let me know that that was the most streamed title by their reckoning from Thursday the 24th of March through Wednesday the 30th. The mind-bending workplace nightmare Severance still made the top 10, though it has been kicked way down the list. The Adam Scott-led series had positioned itself in second for a few weeks. It's now been pushed down to eighth. Real Good is not the only group noting the effect of CODA's best picture nod. Apple Insider highlights a report from Variety saying that the film was viewed 300% more in the week after its win than in the week before. That is according to, wait for it, a secret someone said to know something about something. Bigger than that, the report has the same source saying that overall, 25% more new viewers joined Apple TV Plus again in the week after the win and compared to the week before. Now all Apple has to do is keep them. Let us wrap with a couple of shows on the horizon for the Cupertino streamer. Last week, Apple TV Plus hit with a first look at the limited drama series Blackbird. Inspired by actual events, the streamer's press release says the series is adapted from the true crime memoir In With the Devil, A Fallen Hero, A Serial Killer, and A Dangerous Bargain for Redemption by James Keane and Hillel Levin. I think it was smart to tighten that title up. Taryn Egerton plays Jimmy Keane, son of a policeman and convicted dealer of drugs. Hit with a 10-year prison sentence with no chance of parole, he's given away to a shorter stint. Enter a maximum security prison for the criminally insane and befriend suspected serial killer Larry Hall. Get him to confess to some murders and say where the bodies are buried. Of course, Hall is the definition of a bad guy, so he could be lying. Apple TV Plus says the dramatic and captivating story subverts the crime genre by enlisting the help of the very people put behind bars to solve its mysteries. Paul Walter Hauser plays Hall. Sepeda Moafi, Greg Kinnear, and Ray Liotta also feature. Six episodes total... The first two premiere on Friday, the 8th of July. And finally today, news of a nature documentary for Apple TV Plus, 
66 million years in the making. The streaming service issued a press release over the weekend announcing Prehistoric Planet, a five-night event, beginning Monday, the 23rd of May. According to the release, Prehistoric Planet combines award-winning wildlife filmmaking, the latest paleontology learnings, and state-of-the-art technology to unveil the spectacular habitats and inhabitants of ancient Earth for a one-of-a-kind immersive experience. John Favreau is one of the producers. He directed the more realistic version of Disney's The Jungle Book. Visual effects will be handled by MPC. They gave the more realistic-looking version of Disney's The Jungle Book its look. Narrated by Sir David Attenborough and featuring an original score by multiple Academy Award winner Hans Zimmer, Apple TV Plus says Prehistoric Planet presents little-known and surprising facts of dinosaur life set against the backdrop of the environments of Cretaceous times, including coasts, deserts, freshwater, ice worlds, and forests. From revealing eye-opening parenting techniques of Tyrannosaurus rex to exploring the mysterious depths of the oceans and the deadly dangers in the sky, Prehistoric Planet brings Earth's history to life like never before. In a five-night event. That's the weirdest part to me. Episodes will hit one per day from the 23rd of May through the 27th. I appreciate Apple's willingness to play with scheduling and releases. And I really wish I knew what they were playing at. The video looks great, by the way. Two pieces from which to choose an official teaser, and an official sneak peek. Both stand ready to stream on YouTube. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Kanji, device management for your Apple environment. Learn more at K-A-N-D-J-I kanji dot I-O slash Mac OS Ken. This show is also sponsored by Trade Coffee. Get $30 off your first order plus free shipping at drinktrade.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.